All right, folks, let's talk about the super prompt. This is my favorite discovery that I have ever had with AI and different processes around using AI. I talked about it in my book on how to write, or in my video on how to write a book with Claude, and I'm going to dig a little deeper into it, and I'll even give you a couple of other super prompts that I created myself for nonfiction that you might also find useful as well. We'll walk you through both the fiction and the nonfiction in this video. Let's go. All right, so this is, I'm in Atticus right here, and this is a super prompt that I have been refining. The core idea behind the super prompt is that first of all, it's gonna be a long prompt, right? We're, we're giving ourselves space to say a lot of things in this prompt to try and guide the AI as best we possibly can. And so that's part of it. The other big part of it is you'll see right here and right here, we have what, uh, what I'm just calling these uh, opening and closing tags. This is something that comes out of various coding languages. You'll see things similar to this. Uh, HTML works in much the same way. I'm not an expert coder, but I know a little HTML enough to really understand what's going on here. Basically, what we're telling the AI, kind of, you know, speaking the AI's language, right, is that uh, we put this here, it says instructions. And what that means to the AI is like, okay, this is the instructions following that. And then we end it with another thing that says instructions, but we have a forward slash, a forward slash in front of it. And that is the basic idea behind these opening and closing tags. What this does is it kind of, because we're using a super long prompt here, we need a way to kind of help the AI understand where each piece of this prompt is so it doesn't get confused or lost, which it can sometimes do even if with this method, but, but this method does kind of make it a lot easier. And so here we go with instructions. And I'm gonna walk you through this particular thing. This is a super prompt that I'm sort of working with and have been tweaking with one of the books I'm going to be writing in the near future. This is for book five of my Fairy Queen series. It's gonna be called Fall of the Fairy. But this is for uh, chapter one. I've been building it slowly. Right now I'm mostly just working on the outline, but I've been experimenting with the super prompt and refining it to get it exactly how I want it. So the, we'll start with the instructions. It's, it says, using all of the information on chapter beats, outline, setting, and character, and I've capitalized these because these are other sections of the super prompt that I want it to reference. Uh, write 50,000 words of chapter one. Now, you may be wondering, 50,000 words, like that's a whole book. I'm not expecting Claude to actually give me 50,000 words. But Claude, does have a tendency of being able to write much longer fiction if I, give it a, if I give it a ridiculous number like this. And I found it to be the most consistent way of doing so. And sometimes you have to run it two or three more times to get it to do it right, but most of the time it's able to do it well if I put a super large number here. So that's why I do that. And then I say use the previous, the, use the previous chapter and the style to determine the prose style of the output follow the chapter beats closely. And then like the rest of this here is basically uh, saying exactly, like I, uh, I'm basically repeating multiple times that I want it to stick to the script and not go off script, which Claude has, is known to do, which is why I repeat it several times in here. And then I follow it up with the chapter should be in third person limited point of view from Una's perspective, Una is my character. You could also put, you know, chapter could be in first person point of view from, you know, whoever your character is. And then I just repeat again, the scene must be a min minimum of 50,000 words. Sometimes repeating something helps the AI get it into its head. And that's the end of instructions, right? I then move on to the section called previous chapter. This is pretty self-explanatory. I have a little preface here at the front that says the following is the last chapter of the book preceding this one. And then I just paste in the last chapter. This is uh, one of the things you can do when you have a super long prompt. And then here I close it with the previous chapter ta tag. Then I move into style. I have a somewhat lengthy style prompt here. I give it the genre, epic young adult fantasy, and a bunch of other things here. One thing I added here was important, avoid mushy over the top or melodramatic dialogue descriptions or inner thoughts. One of the things that AI does frequently is those things. So I, I just tell it that this is important. 
I'm not sure if it makes a huge difference, but it's one of those tweaks that I think I think did. And then we move into characters. And we have each paragraph here is one character. And I have a couple of things inside of these characters, like their Myers-Briggs profile and their Enneagram type to try and get their voices to sound distinct. But notice I only have one, char uh, one paragraph here. I was playing around with this and I originally was having like an entire profile, like a thousand or plus words for each character, thinking that the more information I gave it, the better the output would be and actually found that to not be the case. I found that the AI got a lot more distracted and started going down rabbit holes that I didn't want it to go down. So now I just kind of keep it to a brief description of their personality and their physical description as well as things like their Myers-Briggs and Enneagram type. And so that makes up the characters, and I've got four of them in this particular case. Then I have a quick section on setting, so it knows where we are. And you could expand this more and give a more description of the area, so it knows. And then I have the outline. I'm still on, not sure if this outline part is, is necessary. What I'm putting here is the outline for the entire book. And so if I'm telling it to write chapter one, it will know that this is chapter one. This is everything I have on it. It's a long description because that's how I outline. But I also put, you know, I've got up to chapter four here. I don't have more yet because I haven't written out the outline yet, but I will eventually have more. And then I close that outline tag. And then we get into the chapter beats. I haven't written these out yet either. These, this is just a brief selection of chapter beats that I generated in Sudorite because I needed something for this video. I will eventually have more here and more detail with each beat. But just so I can demonstrate this, I'm, I'm going to do that for you. Obviously, you can see like with these things, I spend a lot of time in the outline and these beats are clearly nothing like that. So you'll, you'll see a lot more as I get into this. But the thing that as I've been testing this, I found to make the most difference in this section is to end it with the end, do not proceed past this point. Because I was finding that the AI was frequently getting sidetracked and continuing the story in a way I didn't want it to do. And a lot of the word count would be devoted to that section that was not what I wrote. And so I found by just saying the end, do not proceed past this point, that was helping it a little bit to stay on task, even through all of the prompts I'd given it before. And then finally, I gave it one more thing that I'm just calling reminder at the very end. And reminder is basically just a repeat of the instructions that I had before. I also added just the genre here, just so I had it in mind. But this is pretty much word for word with maybe a few tweaks here and there, the exact same instructions I had before because I want it to start and end with it knowing exactly what it needs to do. And this has been the prompt that has been working well for me so far. And so let's go ahead and test it. I'm gonna just copy it verbatim. We're gonna stick it in here into Claude. And of course it creates a TXT file because it's a long prompt. If we look here, it's almost 5,000 words of a, of a prompt, which is long and it can get much bigger too. And here we go. It starts out, Una took a deep breath as she stood just inside the crumbled archway leading into the Southern courtyard of Castle Silene. Rays of the setting sun slanted acro across the space illuminating the weathered stones. She smoothed her hands over the ivory silk of her gown, steadying herself. Today was the day, and everything that they had endured for the past months, all the battles and headaches, today she would finally marry her beloved George. Not, not too bad. I, you know, I will, of course, have edits to make, but as long as it is sticking to the prompt I gave it, and the prose is not too egregious, uh, that makes me want to edit the style, this is good. And I'm really happy with this. All right, so it finished the generation and it did actually stray into chapter two a little bit. And I'm not entirely sure what to do with that. The reason it did that is because I had it in the outline. So what I might do is instead of outline, I might change it to overview and then only put the summary of what happens in that chapter above the chapter beats. So it has both, I can see the overall summary and the chapter beats with more detail. But that's, that's another test I will do later. Let's go ahead and see how much it wrote. We passed, patched that in here, almost 3,000 words. So that's pretty good. If we just do the bits that it um, that were part of the chapter, it was more like 1,700 words. So it generated about 1,000 extra words that I didn't want it to generate, but that's not necessarily too bad. This is still a good chapter for a starting point. 
So that is the super prompt. I really love this whole thing, but let's talk about other practical reasons where you could use a super prompt. And one of them I'm super excited about because I am a SEO writer by trade. I do a lot of uh, writing for articles. That's what I do for Kindlepreneur. I have a lot of my own websites that are built around SEO. And uh, it's an important thing. And so I thought, well, can I build a super prompt for SEO? And I will probably do an entire episode on this, but I'll give you just an overview of what this looks like. I have two of them so far. One I'm calling it just an informational article super prompt and another one that is a product review super prompt. And this is the thing about a super prompt. You can kind of adapt it for whatever situation you have for long form fiction or nonfiction. Uh, so here's what my informational article super prompt looks like. I want you to write a 30,000 word article. Again, I'm using a ridiculous large number so that it just writes extra uh, for your topic. So just throw in whatever you want to write about from a first person perspective. Use I when describing your feelings about the subject. I've supplied you with the examples of other articles and video transcripts from various sources with some of the information you need. Use these examples to formulate an article that demonstrates firsthand experience. Use the keywords I have given you when it makes sense and use them between one and four times each if possible. Follow the article outline exactly. And they have a couple of additional guidelines here. And then here we have the keywords section. So I list any keywords I want to be included in this. And I find that you know it's not perfect. It doesn't get every keyword, but it gets enough of them that it can pass through a lot of the SEO tools out there that will scan your article for keywords and give you suggestions, it will usually pass with a good score through those tools. Then we have article outline, and this is where you insert your article um, with H2 and H3 headers. So you have like the basic flow, and this is one thing I do myself, is as I'm researching the topic I wanna write about, I figure, I okay, I wanna talk about A, B, and C, and within C I wanna talk about one, two, and three. And I just put that here in that outline and then I give it examples. And so I can take other articles that were written on the subject, put them in here. I can take YouTube transcripts of videos that are relevant to the subject and put them in here so that the AI knows all of the information it needs to know. And then it spits out an article in a single pass. Now, just to address the ethics of this, first of all, if you run it through a plagiarism checker, it doesn't plagiarize anything from the example things. It's really just using the information there, which is the same thing that I do if I'm writing the article myself. I will go through all of the other articles that are written and ranking well on Google, and I will kind of use that to inform what I am writing, just sort of mixing it up in my own words. So it's really the same process. But the important thing about writing an SEO article is to expand on it, add your own little flair. And so I still do that part myself. I come up with a first draft from this whole process. And then I say, okay, what can I add to this that none of the others have? And that's what I do. It saves me a whole lot of time creating that initial first draft. And so there's a lot of space here for different examples. And the product review SEO prompt is very similar, except I give it an overview in this product information area. I give it an overview of the product, maybe some list of features. And then here, instead of examples, I give it reviews. So I let the AI know, like, what do people actually think of this product? And I can go to Amazon and just copy reviews and stick them in there. Or I can go to other places that review products and stick them in there. Same sort of process, but just slightly tweaked for that specific SEO use case situation. Uh, now, uh, I've only been doing this on my own personal websites, obviously, because I'm a professional SEO writer. I'm not doing this anywhere where I'm, it's not asked of me. But I'll give you an example of one that I did on one of my websites, mythbank.com. This is an article on Helen of Troy. And this, we'll just briefly scan through it all, is what it made me. And the only thing I really did here was fact check everything. And it did a really good job of staying on the facts. Even this, like the family of Helen of Troy, it got all of these names correct. I was impressed personality of Helen of Troy, the myths involving Helen of Troy, and then it gave me an H3 and an H3 and just gave me all of the myths involving the Helen of Troy. We talked about the cult of Helen, Helen in pop culture, all these things. Very nice, extensive article. And, and so I posted this and I did a good job. And I, again, I'll probably do a whole video about this because it's like mind blowing to me and it's by far the best way to do an SEO article with AI that I have found 
even more so than like there's uh, there's a company out there called S Surfer SEO which will do something similar to this for 30 bucks a pop, right? It costs 30 bucks to create an article like this. And I've done it with my method and it is so much better. And the quality is better, the prose is better, it's just better overall. And so, uh, yeah, I'll be doing a video on this even though it's not as related to fiction. Uh, although, if you are a fiction writer, the, there are ways that you can make this work for you. And so, that's just an example of how you could use it in nonfiction and uh, and have it work well. And so that is a general overview of the super prompt. I'll probably do more videos with specific super prompts that that I'm using. And I want to hear any that you have. If as you've seen, I have my fiction one, but I really just adapted the same con concepts to create my own SEO article super prompt. So I think there are probably dozens of use cases for a super prompt like this. Maybe you could come up with a super prompt for creating uh, your beats or a super prompt for creating a character. You know, there's all kinds of different things that you could do. I would love to hear you brainstorm in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.